Hi guys. Imagine that. It is getting ready to be another rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I can't believe it. We actually had some blue sky for two days and uh, we have almost finished building the levees here to hold back the floods here and bugs in a jar farm in the Finger Lakes of New York. But now that the rain has returned and darkness is now falling at pretty much 6 p.m. up here. It is Friday, October 29th, 2021. Didn't something happen on October 29th a few years ago? Uh, so you know what that means. It is time for my ecological meltdown roundup rant, which I've been doing for about 10 years where I head over to mongabay.com uh, for their laundry list of assaults against this collapsing planet. So 10 years, guys, I've, I've been doing this. You know, that I, and I open up mongabay.com, and guess what? Rhett, probably, I have no idea why, uh, has fixed what has never been broken, okay? He's got this prettier little layout, this flashy new layout and whatnot, trying to be in it with the beautiful people, I guess. So what for, for 10 years, what the, the way this uh, newsletter has been structured, if, if you've ever gone on it, is you, you know they, they have the headline of the story with a little photograph. And then what it does is it gives a three bullet summary, of the whole story. So you read the three bullet summary as you're going down the roll of Rolodex of horror. Uh, and if you want to get more depressed than just the three bullets, then you go on the full story. So what I've been doing for 10 damn years is going down the Rolodex, reading the three bullets. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but now in their infinite wisdom, they have changed it now, and in, you don't get the three bullets anymore. What you get is just the, you know, the opening sentence uh, of the story. So now you have to, you can't just, you understand what I'm saying? You have to click on uh, the damn headline and blah, 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 and open up the thing and then go back and forth. Uh, come on, Red. I, I'm going to send Red a letter and say, brother... Anyway, so we're going to start something new since Red is what I'm going to do in, the, in this roundup is I'm going to do 10 of these. Each Friday, we're going to look at 10 uh, doom and gloom stories from Manga Bay not getting any press on, uh, on the mainstream media. I might save a couple... Uh, you know, for Saturday for the Hopium, like here's one right up here, indigenous leaders to push for land tenure rights as climate solution at COP26. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, that one might show up tomorrow. So what we're going to do starting today is we're going to pick out 10 of the doomiest, gloomiest stories out of the 40 or 50. Uh, and we're going to start out in sub-Saharan Africa. We're going to go to Nigeria, which unbelievably, Nigeria still has a gorilla left in it, but not for long, as we will start with this one. We are running out of time deforestation soars in Nigeria's gorilla habitat. So then you go on the story and then you get the little summation and then the whole story. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do, you know, these little roundups at the beginning. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, in the middle of a protected area, the Afi River Forest Reserve in eastern Nigeria's Cross River State is an important habitat corridor for gorillas, but deforestation has been rising both in the forest reserve and elsewhere in Cross River. 
Yes, uh, Satellite Data Show 2020 was the biggest year for forest loss, both in the state and inside the Gorilla Reserve. Yes, and preliminary data for 2021 suggest that this year is on track to exceed even last year. Poverty-fueled illegal logging and farming is behind much of the deforestation in the refuge. Resource wars have broken out. Here you go. Resource wars have broken out between communities that have claimed the lives of more than 100. I'm assuming they're talking about more than 100 people not gorillas. Uh, anyway, authorities say a lack of financial support and threats of violence are limiting their ability to protect what forest remains. You can cross the Cross River uh, gorillas off of the map. Okay, that's story number one. Okay, we're gonna go in story number two from, let's go from Nigeria to Brazil. From floods to drought, Brazil's Acre state swings between weather extremes, and this is pretty much true of anywhere in the Amazon. Extreme weather conditions from massive flooding to severe water shortages have rocked cities and small communities alike in the heart of the Brazilian Amazon this year, a trend experts attribute to climate change and human actions. Yes, the Acre River in the western Brazilian Amazon is expecting its second worst drought in recorded history with water levels close to record, law, record lows. Uh, the water shortage just comes months after the same region experienced wide, widespread flooding and forced hundreds of thousands of people to flee. Brazil, as a whole, is facing its worst dry spell in nearly a century, which is affecting water supplies for people, agriculture, and electricity generation, and is part of a global pattern of increased water stress. Right. Okay. Are you already waving goodbye to the folks? No, that's just two down. We got eight to go. We're going to pass on World Lemur Day being celebrated with new postage stamps. Yes, here's one for tomorrow. Pingers, pingers on fishing nets found to save river dolphins in Borneo. That's one for tomorrow. Uh, all right. Uh, what is... Let's go over to Indonesia. Uh, looking at an iron mine in Indonesia. Indonesian farmers resisting an iron mine run up against a sultan. Uh, there you go. Farmers in Indonesia's Jakarta province face eviction from the land their families have worked for generations to make way for an iron sand mine. Yes. Uh, gee, take a wild guess who uh, is claiming he owns the land. That would be the ruling sultan. Uh, the Sultan's daughter is listed as a shareholder of one of the companies that owns the mining firm. Hmm. The farmers have held repeated protests against the project and derided the offers to buy out their land at prices that, quote, 
don't make sense. I think you can take that story. Uh, don't make sense. Uh, okay. I'm going to read the headlines and so you can hear what I'm landing on. Here's indigenous guides warn of repercussions if we don't fix our relationship with nature. Uh, all right, we have an environmental activist in Uganda being arrested. I didn't know there were any environmental activists in Uganda, but... Uh, Okay, let's look at the banksters behind it all. Is this going to be number three? All right, banking on deforestation, top lenders make $1.7 billion from agribusiness deals. $1.7 billion, my you-know-what. But anyway, <clears throat> for anybody who, d who does not understand this, some of the world's leading banks, including J.P. Morgan, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, BNP Paribas, Rabobank, and do not forget the Bank of China, allegedly, allegedly made $1.74 billion in the last five years from funding business, businesses implicated in deforestation and human rights abuses. Wow, imagine that. This is called the banksters behind it all. Lenders in the U.S. alone made $538 million by doing business with companies accused of clearing forests according to the NGO Global Witness. Voluntary commitments are falling short, hmm. the report's authors argued, and called on countries to pass laws against bankrolling forest destruction and human rights abuses. Maybe I should have added that, put this one in tomorrow's hopium. Uh, do you think that voluntary commitments by development banks are falling short of saving the planet? Uh, okay, was that number three? Okay, number four. Let's go look at what Chevron is doing to the plant, to the uh, to the planet. A new 100-page report raises alarm over what Chevron's alarm over Chevron's impact on the planet. And Chevron uh, is, isn't, uh, I guess they're, what, in the top five? Okay. How is Chevron taking down the planet? An independent expert report has determined that of the 70 ongoing cases in 31 different countries, against Chevron Oil Company, only 0 0.006%, 0 0.006% in fines, court judgments, and settlements have been paid. The company still owes another $50 billion dollars you know, to all of these uh, people and, uh, I guess, gorillas and orangutans. Uh, we've all heard of this one. Uh, they're still, uh, they, uh, you know, holding back on the $9.5 billion in environmental damages in Ecuador. Uh, where are some of the other countries where Chevron uh, is running amok. Wow. Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, uh, a number of countries in Africa, Asia, the Middle East. 
In the U.S., there were 13 ongoing litigations against Chevron. Uh, the same day the report was released, international human rights lawyer Stephen Donziger uh, was imprisoned. He was the lead attorney on the Chevron Ecuador case, was thrown into prison. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I guess some progress is being made. Okay, that was number four. Okay. The number five. What makes a refugee, particularly a climate refugee, I always say that I am a climate refugee who just happened to uh, sell his place on a floodplain in Texas, buy a place on a floodplain in New York, and I have had more, uh, more problems being a climate refugee since I moved to the safest place in the United States to live than I ever was in Texas, but this isn't about me. Uh, this is about what makes a refugee. It could be a life or death question in the climate crisis. Okay, for story number five, what makes a refugee? A new analysis by the Environmental Justice Foundation says that international laws covering refugee protection are too narrow for the climate crisis, the group is calling for a new global agreement to protect those who are forced to flee the effects of climate change. Uh, yes, well, where does it say? Do we have uh, a definition or not? Uh, anyway, they're trying to figure out and, uh, oh well, I guess we don't get our definition of what makes a refugee. Uh, it's like uh, that definition of obscenity from the 1970s. Who was that uh, Supreme Court judge? I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I see it. <laughs> there you go. I think that's a good definition as we're going to get for what makes a climate refugee. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over to the Philippines. Philippine wetland oil riches untouched by war are now up for grabs in peacetime. This is just one more story how war saving the planet. Uh, and there, I've mentioned this, how, you know, when there's an active war going on, planet eaters can stay away, but then they make peace, the war stops, and all the planet eaters move in. And here's the latest example of this. This is the 712,000 acre Liguasan Marsh, Marsh in the southern Philippines is the country's largest and most intact wetland left in the Philippines, a haven for birds and a source of livelihood for the 100 families who live there. Yes. Uh, the marsh was a hot spot during uh, this, this, one of these big wars that you never hear about in the mainstream media. It was also known for its oil and gas reserves, with a peace deal now forged. Uh, the new regional government is seeking investors to help develop the marsh's oil and gas reserves. Some fear this extractive activity will damage the marsh's ecosystem and exacerbate land conflict in an area where land tenure is already complex and contested. Yep. And again, any of these stories, guys, you can pretty much go anywhere on the planet and have the story repeated. Was that number six? Okay. In Zimbabwe, an irrigation project threatens a tribe's land and trees. 
Uh, we're gonna move on. Uh, the we have another one for tomorrow. The Inga tree. The Inga tree points to way out of slash and burn for Central American farmers. Oh yes. And then they have a picture of these Inga trees growing in a deforested, anyway. Uh, indigenous Papuans won their forest back from a palm oil firm, but still lack land title. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, All right, here is, let's go back to Brazil. Uh, this is a commentary. This, you know, Philip Fernside, I like checking in with, with Philip. Uh, I think he has a, a, a column once a month. You know, he's their ears on the ground in, in Brazil. So this is, this is Philip Fernside's uh, Talk on about this uh, highway is an attack on Brazil's interest and Amazonia's future. Uh, all right, summing this up, Brazil's proposed reconstruction of the of Highway 319 connecting Manaus with the arc of deforestation in southern Amazonia would bring deforesters to vast areas of what remains of the Amazon rainforest. The forest areas in western Amazonia that would be opened up by planned roads connecting to that highway are vital to maintaining rainfall that supplies water to Sao Paulo and other urban and agricultural areas. Uh, anyway, uh, so they are holding hearings, holding hearings despite impacted indigenous peoples not having been consulted among other irregularities. I bet some irregularities in an Amazon highway public hearing. All right, seven down, three to go. Uh, all right, we're going to look at these, uh, for number eight, these sustainability save the planet labels. You know, this is looking at greenwashing. NGOs save FSC, you know, the infamous Forest Stewardship Council. I believe you see this. I at Home Depot. Environmental organizations say the Forest Stewardship Council label offers little protection for forests hmm, or indigenous people. All right. The Forest Stewardship Council better known as the FSC, a widely recognized ethical wood label came under fire from NGOs this week for systematic flaws that allow deforestation and companies with questionable human rights records to benefit from the certification. Are you noticing a repeating pattern in, in this rant? Forest certification allows timber suppliers to attract discerning, high-paying customers, adopt an eco-friendly image, you know, to their cutting down rainforest, adopt an eco-friendly image, and meet requirements to access lucrative markets like the EU. Earlier this year, Greenpeace published a report arguing that the FSC had, quote, greenwashed forest destruction, highlighting a trend of increasing deforestation and degradation despite the expansion of the certification. <clears throat> In the Congo Basin, for one example, 
which hosts the second largest tract of rainforest after the Amazon. The, and the area under FSC certification has in fact shrunk and even in certified concessions, valuable intact forest land is under threat. Anybody believing any of these, these certification sustainability pledges and these little tag, it's, it's unadulterated greenwashing horseshit, guys. But of course, we all know that. Uh, okay, we're going to. Uh, what do I have? Two more. Uh, okay, I need to choose. There's six more, and I'm going to choose two. So we have. Indigenous Bolivians take the defense of their land into their own hands. We have the poisoned city, the story of Brazil's forgotten environmental disaster. We have cats, charisma, and climate change. We have Bozo Nero evades genocide blame. Do you think so? But we're going to go to the last two. Okay, let's go to Papua New Guinea for number nine. Study chronicles dying of a lake in PNG with the advent of oil and gas activities. Wow, the oil and gas drillers move in, the lake dies. A new study finds warning signs of ecosystem collapse at Lake Kutubu in Papua New Guinea, a wetland of international significance. The warning signs come in the form in major shifts in algae, in algae composition and dung inhabiting fungi in the lake sediment indicating a drop in water quality coinciding with oil and gas extraction in the area. The lake used to have extensive beds of microalgae, which provided a breeding ground for endemic fish and crayfish, but these, you know, the good algae, have since all but disappeared. Yes, the researchers have called for action such as monitoring the lake's algae and fish populations to save the lake from impending ecological collapse. Look at this gorgeous lake they're talking about. How would you like to have a, that view out your window? All right, that's number nine, but we are in our new form of rent. We're going to wind up with the tenth and final story. We're going to go back to uh, the Amazon looking at gold mining. $200 million in gold extracted in Amazon, in, I guess in one Amazon mine, through illegal licenses. Imagine that. This is Ghana Gold. Ghana Gold, G-A-N-A, -A, generated about $200 million in revenue using illegally obtained environmental licenses in Brazil. This is equivalent to three tons of gold extracted, but of course for every ton of gold, good lord, how many tons of this crap is dumped in the uh, Amazon rivers and, uh, and all of this mercury. Uh, by the company's own reckoning, its operations should be producing annual revenues of around $6 million if operating within its licensing limits. Located inside a conservation area, the company has extracted 32 times more gold than the projected estimate it made to the regulating agency. Yes, the, 
the Brazilian Mining Regulation Agency. That, that, that must be a busy office. Yes. So guess what? They have been fined. They have been fined by the regulating agency. What do you think the fine is for their $200 million profit? If your guess was 1% of that, $2 million in fines for their illegal activity inside a conservation area. You know, this story repeated over and over. It's a cost of doing business. They, they get a license to go out and then take what, what, whatever, make $6 million. They make $200 million. They get busted. They pay a $2 million fine and walk out with $198 million in their pocket. This is not limited to, uh, this is not limited to uh, the Amazon rainforest. I mean, this is common practice right here in the United States. Uh, a cost of doing business, and then you got to add in, you, you know, bribing the, uh, the the cops and all that. But anyway, I have got to wrap this up because I understand I'm talking to myself, and the little dog says he needs some food, and I need a margarita. And the rainy night begins. Get out there and build your levee while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog, did you survive your Manga Bay rant? Bye, guys. Yeah, 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 we're done.